looks like we have some kind of lack there in that regard. Uh, is that why we see the same student when he or she leaves the country, uh, outside the country, they come out uh, in flying colors? Oh, absolutely. What yeah. do they do that is quite different from what we do here? Well, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a state of mind. If I think I'm the all-knowing, ever-present uh, uh, teacher and you know, my student cannot become anything uh, outside of me, then I have limited that child's horizon. But over there, you know, you, the student is the reason the school exists. So everything else that's happening is happening because of that child. So my job is because of that child. The principal's job is because of that child. And I, as a teacher, should want to recreate the best in me in every child that my life or my hand touches. So it's the passion for that child, which means you know, it's a passion for education. If you have a passion for education, you'll have a passion for the child. And if, if, if you all were asked to remember uh, the, the teacher that, you know, your favorite teacher, I bet you it was somebody who touched your life. Not somebody who gave you an A or graded your paper uh, and, and you scored an A, but somebody who, I mean, my f favorite teacher uh, was my uh, math teacher when I was in high school. Um, I struggled with mathematics. It's a miracle. I'm a professor of finance now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have to thank him because he looked at me one day, stopped me in the hallway, and he said, Awoshika, do you hate me? And I'm like, oops, <laughs> no, sir. Why would I hate you? And he said, but you're not passing my course. I think you don't like me, so you don't like my course. Mm. And I'm like, no, I like you. And all of a sudden, it was like, I have to do something. This guy thinks I hate him. And I started from book one all the way to book five, you know, for all the form five, reviewed all my math mathematics, you know, you know, came out in frying colors in, in YEC. And, and today I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a professor of finance because he challenged me. That little, that A that was in me, he pulled it out just by stopping me in the hallway. Now it would seem that we have a pretty complex problem. Uh, you, you said you, when you returned, you took one good look at the university again. You thought you couldn't cope here. What would you have had changed so that you could have been able to cope? The attitude of the lecturers. Their attitude. This is not your ivory tower. This is a place where our future is happening. This is where you bring every good thing that is in you and you put it in those students. So basically, or primarily, it's not so much as, as per the curriculum, but the attitude of teachers, lecturers, and those who impart knowledge generally in, Absolutely. in that's, education. That's, that's exactly what I meant at the beginning when I said, who is teaching and what are they teaching? You know, a lot of these people are teaching nothing. I mean, uh, today, 2013, there are lecturers in our universities that don't have notes. <laughs> no lecture notes. First-hand information. Attitudinal change is one, so it's something that is herculean for any minister to be able to change. How would you suggest the minister goes about trying to change the attitudes of those in ivory towers, for instance? There, there must be repercussions. I mean, there must be close watching. I mean, my, the question that I kept asking myself is, you know, who are the heads of departments of these people? You know, who are the deans of these people? Who, you know, who, who's the vice chancellor? We just, you know, heard, you know, the minister of education talking about a VC, you know, being, you know, irresponsible. I mean. It's, and it's unfortunate that it's those people who rise through the ranks you know, that, that become vice chancellors. So the attitude you know, is probably you know, you know, going up there with them. I think but it's still worthy of note that that VC is still there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. despite the harsh comments of the minister, the, the VC is still the VC of the University Which of Abuja. Which brings us to there needs to be repercussions. When, when you use some people as scapegoats you know, to teach you know, others, 
you know, when you, when, when you, I mean, you, when you, when you hold people accountable. A lot of us in this country just get up in the morning, go to work. Nobody is telling you, uh, uh, is, is asking you, are you measuring up today? Have you done your quota for today? Until that starts happening, it's not going to change. And I think also we watch who goes into our in, in, into teaching. I know a lot of people don't want to be teachers. Fine, maybe you're not called to be a teacher, you know. But if you're going to be teaching, we need to do a psychological profile on you. We need to you know run tests, you know, to make sure that you do have the passion for those people that you're supposed to be teaching. I mean, uh, even if you're not, even if you're not, uh, you don't have all the educational uh, uh, aspect of your profession, when you have the passion for it, you're constantly looking for ways of making things better for your students. So that is what we need to be looking for, that innate uh, love for education and for the future of our children. So what does one do where uh, you get to some of these institutions and some of the lecturers, maybe the HODs, had the finest education in their time, and then they come back here? They're ramming things down the throat of students. They're making sure you take about 12 courses in one semester. While in their time, they could just take two, and you take it all easy. And so what do you expect from such people? How do you fix or remedy that kind of situation? Again, it's the system that allows them to do that. <clears throat> I, I taught in the, um, in the um, American system. I taught in the Nigerian system. And what happens with the American system is you're held accountable. There's a specific deadline. There are certain uh, objectives that have to be met in your course. First of all, I'm not sure that students give end of course evaluations in this country. They should, because that is what determines whether you still have a job as a lecturer. You know, you, the, when the co end of course evaluation comes in, you know, there, there are certain things that you weigh. I mean, you don't hack, you know, just, you know, cut off a lecturer because the evaluation doesn't come in right. You know, maybe the students, you know, ganged up and, you know, they decided that, you know, we're going to just get rid of this person. No. A as an administrator, an educational administrator, you know the signs to look for in an evaluation. So lecturers should be evaluated. Uh, the deans should be on top of their, of their, uh, lecturers, make sure that the grades, the, the marks come in uh, on time. Um, in most schools that I know, you have deadlines. If your grades are not, not in by that uh, deadline, uh, then you, know, you either don't get paid or you don't get assigned you know, courses the Pardon next semester. I jump in there because I mean, some are tweeting now that in some schools as we speak, lots of their grades are missing. And many of them graduate with this shortfall. Oh, I, I mean, that's what, what I meant when I said we needed an, uh, an overhaul you know, of our educational system, <coughs> especially our university system. I, I don't disagree. I, I, I think I know somebody you know, close to me who graduated four years ago and still hasn't, you know, cannot find all their grades. 